Hi, welcome to the next installment of the Daily Drawing Time Lapse. This is 96 through 106. And the first one up we have is this character that I've used in a bunch of stuff named Hollis. That's the his name, not the bunch of stuff. The first his first big appearance was his main feature was in the Wrenchies. The graphic novel came out in 2014. And then I had him in some stuff before that in my art book Delusional, and he was in the last Pop Gun War volume and Proxima Centauri. Um, it's the second time I've done him, drawn him for these daily drawings. Someone on my Patreon requested that I do it. I do one of him, and I'd already done one, but I like drawing him. Didn't mind doing him again. So uh, most of these uh, said in previous videos. Uh, most of these have been done with Faber Castell pit pens, small and extra small, and then I watercolor and do a little gouache over that and they're about like four inches square most of them and this one is a was requested on my patreon all these ones have, are based off requests that i've gotten off my patreon um different subscribers in the comment section ask me to draw you know we'll do a short description of something they like to see me draw like a single character not licensed or anything just kind of my own take on something that I can reprint basically without any hassle. And um, this one was a, someone asked for a Von Baudet style lizard. The, the artist, a Cheech Wizard. There's like, as far as I know, there's like a few characters in that. I've never really read any serious amount of Cheech Wizard, but I remember there being like the mushroom Cheech Wizard guy. And then there was like this lizard guy that was naked <laughs> and then uh there was like a sort of like a red sonia looking type girl in it and it uh yeah i don't know i like the style of it the much graffitied uh style but i just rather than try to draw on that style i just did my own own take on it and i like the way this this one came out the finished product um, so much so that I think like, oh, I could probably include him in a future story. Like, it seems like I put him in this It Will Hurt, the Wrenchies kind of world, the sort of post-apocalyptic looking thing. I imagine he's just some sort of mutant wizard guy. And I imagine there's some stories I could think of to insert him in. And yeah, this is just the... Uh, a photo of the image and this is the scan of the image here and it looks a little lighter always looks a little lighter in the scans which uh i'm okay with but usually prints darker and uh this next one was a request of a skeleton cowboy so i i made the the skeleton head more like a horse skeleton and i Drew like a, I think I looked at a couple pictures of um, Clint Eastwood in the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and he's got the poncho and sort of that wool vest thing or sheepskin vest, whatever that is. And yeah, I just did a quick cartoony pose, based you know had him wearing the clothes, and I don't know, horse skull seemed a little more interesting to, for me to draw than just a human. This next one, someone asked me to draw Teddy Roosevelt, and it seemed fun to do this one with a brush. So yeah, then I use the Raphael 8404, number four, to do all the inking and the, a lot of the washes with before switching to watercolor. And this was an interesting request because uh, I, of all the American presidents, I guess he was the one that I've been most fascinated with growing up. and learning new things about a lot of bad stuff <laughs> but you know there's some cool stuff too like founding the national parks like yosemite yellowstone probably wouldn't be there if not for him and i don't know it was kind of an interesting thing thing to do to uh, take on a historical figure and this one was probably the one of the one i was most excited about initially and i really liked that sketch i did there um and, you know, I love this book, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, 
I didn't actually ever read it until I was an adult. I listened to the audio, an audio version of it and was just kind of blown away about like, you know, cause I knew it from like monster, you know, the movies and stuff, but like listening to that book, it was just like, I don't know. There's, I felt like there's stuff that doesn't really doesn't come across in any of the film adaptations that I've seen. And it, I don't know, made me appreciate her as a writer and this character. So I, I did like a, a take on him, like walking the, uh, the ice. And, um, I put that little quote on the bottom of everywhere I see bliss, which I used in Popgun War too. Um, this next one was, uh, a request that someone had a jellyfish listening to music. <laughs> uh, I went through a couple different versions of it. I, I just drew it as like a big jellyfish and I was going to have, I kept redrawing the background and eventually I just ended up scrapping it just because it felt like too illustration-y or something and decided to go with this one, which I just thought like, okay, what if jellyfish listening to music, what that doesn't have to be like just a normal jellyfish underwater as like, I could draw something that I want to, it's like a little more fun for me to draw, which is like a figure rather than a, it was just kind of difficult for me to think like, okay, how am I going to use line to express these jellyfish? So I decided just to forget drawing them out with a pen and just going to, I was just going to leave that last to paint last. So I did a line drawing of this kind of alien elf pan character playing this, some kind of space flute. I don't know. I was trying to think like, well, how would that work if it was like in some kind of atmosphere where these like, jellyfish thing could float around like maybe it's just like a kind of humming vibration rather than like air flowing through it but uh anyway uh i decided just to yeah like use a line line drawing for him and then i used some ink to get different shading here and left them unrendered until the very last and then i decided then i just put some like colors just to sort of give them a little bit of form and i felt like it kind of helped us make this like little translucent quality to them more like kind of ghostly looking like jellyfish might look instead of just using lines this next uh one someone asked me to do a a scene that i show in the wrenchies a couple of times with these buried ro- giant robots and i don't really have like a story for them or anything it's just kind of like a i don't know i guess i'm thinking like a miyazaki type thing just kind of gave the the world a little bit of flavor where it's like just walking I was like well what is the story with that and I just never really thought about it too much beyond that something in the ancient past someone (laughs) there's some these giant robots from some at some point in our future history and uh yeah I just did a you know like other ones I did like a pencil drawing I think I went through a couple different pencil drawings or just kept erasing and redoing the composition and stuff and uh yeah there's the finish watercolor over line drawing and this next one a buddy of mine asked me to do a punk rock fox assassin (laughs) so i originally had this mask that i drew on him but then i felt like that looked a little too raccoon ish and this was super fun for me to draw because i didn't really have to worry about I mean, I'd reference the face to get the fox head right, but the rest of it I just kind of made up. And I don't know, it's always more fun than trying to get something, looking at a picture of something. And, uh, yep, yeah, here's the half, half-colored half version. And I, I gave him these sort of, like, new wave sunglasses that don't have stem, because, like, how would he get those over his ears? So I just figured they'd kind of, you know, float in front of his face. And I, they're modeled after um, one of the kids in Over the Edge, this movie that I liked a lot and was a big influence on the Wrenchies. And I figured this guy could fit somewhere in the Wrenchies at Wall Hurt World. And this next one is a character that I've actually drawn, I think, at least one other time on this daily drawing thing, Sinclair from Pop Gun War. And I, I started with this sort of loose sketch and then I kind of went back and redrew it a little bit later, looking at my bicycle for reference. And, uh, yeah, just 
this pencil drawing. Use one of these Faber Castile pit pens. And someone, yeah, specifically asked me to draw him riding a bike because there's uh, at least in one of the issues, one of the chapters in Pop Gun War, he rides his bike around a lot. And I don't know, I, th I thought that was kind of like a funny thing. It's this kid who can fly over the rooftops and stuff with these wings, um, rides his bike around just because that's fun too sometimes. Yeah, I like... Uh using bicycles in my comics but I, I wouldn't say I particularly enjoy drawing bikes but I like riding bikes and I like uh, sort of I guess the different ways that you can use them um, in a comic book and uh, I don't really have him flying around with a bicycle in Pop Gun War although Proxima Centauri there are some like flying bicycles but in Popkin War, he's mostly just on the street interacting with people. And um, I thought here it would work as him flying with it just because it'd be easier for me to draw rather than placing him on the street. I could just do these this little cityscape below him and have him floating in the air. And I guess overall I'm pretty happy with the way that one came out. Um, like from sketch to finish, I think... Uh, yeah, um, I felt like I knew when to quit on that one. And this next one is a sci-fi turtle, which is kind of a redo of a an older daily drawing, like one of the, uh, maybe like a month ago, I someone requested I do a sci-fi turtle. And I guess there's another Patreon subscriber that liked it so much, they asked me to do another one. So this is a little different, I guess the, the turtle's shell and color is a little different too but the pose is in a different direction kind of leaning over instead of standing upright and yeah I just I don't know I figure these guys are maybe it's it's the same turtle or maybe it's like their cousins or brother maybe they're part of this like group of like a little army of repair turtles that live in the Proxima Centauri world or something I don't know I haven't thought about it too much but uh <laughs> I like doing it it's fun and this is the last drawing in the compilation this time and this is a character also from Pop Gun War that someone requested um I don't know if they requested him being on the bike or not but he in the comic he definitely is on a bike at the end he's in the last chapter and you can see the Pop Gun War volume I'm referencing right next door and so he, this is the fallen angel character that Sinclair gets his wings from in the first few pages of, of Popkin War. And he's based off this buddy of mine that I used to pal around with when I lived in New York. I mean, just physically. I mean, the character's not... There's not really a lot to this character where he, he doesn't really have a lot of lines. He just kind of comes in the beginning and the end and every once in a while you see him in the background. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. His his tattoos are always kind of changing too because my buddy had, has gotten so many more tattoos since when I first met him and got took reference photos of him and stuff. And this is pretty much the same bicycle that I drew for Sinclair this time, which uh, yeah, I don't know if Roger would actually ride a bike like this, but um, this is just my bicycle. Let's use that as reference. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of I kind of made up a lot of the tattoos or most of them really sort of loosely based a couple off his. And then I just fudged the rest. And that brings us to the end, the last uh drawing in this compilation of time-lapse videos. And um uh, if you want to check out my Instagram, do the, the drawing every day. And thanks a lot for watching.